Welcome to JSA TV Europe, together with the Greener Data Movement for this quarter's live event focused on European digital infrastructure sustainability. I'm Jean-Marc Lim, and joining me today is Daniel Rosario, VP of Hyperscale Sales at NDC Garb Data Centers Europe. Uh, Daniel, it's a pleasure speaking to you. Welcome on JSA. Um, yeah? Sorry, no, thank you so much, Hugo, and uh, thank you for the invitation. It's a privilege to be here. Our pleasure. I think what's happening in NDC is quite interesting, the markets that you're operating, especially Germany. Um, it's all, it's very interesting, a bit of a mysterious mystery uh, to some of our viewers, but we're going to get into it in a second. Um, first, let's maybe just go over the, the, the current state of the markets uh, across Europe. So how can the industry address the issue of energy efficiency uh, and sustainability in its data centers? No, thank you. And again, uh, uh, for the invitation. Uh, Looking at the industry itself, uh, to answer your question there, especially within Europe, uh, every market is unique and every location is unique. And in every location, uh, the deployments can be unique as well. So depending on the customer, the scale that they're deploying uh, and what applications they're running, it is very varied from location to location. On the power, uh, when we look at the power consumption or the power utilization within each uh, geographical region, most of our customers, uh, especially taking the hyperscalers into uh, the forefront, they are looking at being more sustainable, bringing that, uh, I would say, ethos into their deployments, starting from uh, site due diligence up to operations uh, mm -hmm. level. So they are doing a, a green energy private uh, power purchases and making sure what they are consuming are more eco-friendly and sustainable and it's coming from a green energy source so uh, i think it's mainly driven by our customers as well as from us as a provider ensuring that we can provide those green certificates and that green energy uh, to our customers so again just to answer your question, it varies from cost, uh, geographical area and uh, deployments within uh, within Europe. Uh, and then, so how you very sort of touched upon it as well, but how is NDC Garb addressing um, the, the 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 climate issue? Sure. Uh, if you look at take a statement step back, like you know, NDC Garb by itself, like you know, we specialize in providing uh, uh, end to end uh, data center development solutions. So what we do is we make sure when we talk to our customers, uh, we, we partner with them, not only for their deployments uh, or for their construction or for their uh, uh, end, end, end results. We also partner with them on their sustainability goals. So if you go to our, our customers, you will identify like, you know, some of the customers have stated on their websites, like 85% of their projects were run by uh, green energy, uh, around five gigawatts of power green energy seven plus gigawatts of power from energy so uh, when we look at those sustainability goals or those sustainability numbers we partner with them we understand okay this is what you want to achieve from a sustainability perspective how do we make sure we achieve them whether from site due diligence uh, when we're looking at a site how green is it is it a green field is it a brown field and how do we ensure we bring out the best out of those uh, uh, sites uh, from the initial status. It's not coming to the end and saying, oh, let's do uh, green power energy. But from the time of due diligence, we bring that sustainability to the forefront. Hmm. OK. Uh, and then because, Daniel, so you see it in, within the, the, the hyperscale team, so the VP of hyperscale, um, how do the conversations with hyperscalers differentiate from, let's say, a, a small enterprise uh, when it comes to sustainability? What, what are they asking for? What questions do they ask you? Mainly from their perspective is, if you look at the scale again, if you look at uh, the hyperscale, uh, what they are deploying and an enterprise customer, uh, the scales are totally, <laughs> totally different levels uh, for them. And again, the enterprise customers are utilizing the hyperscaler services and the hyperscalers for their scale, when they look at it, they come around 40 megawatts plus 200, 200 megawatts. 
So when we have those conversations with them, it is to really understand from pl- design, from planning, uh, design, construction, and implementation. So all those phases come into effect, all the sustainability uh, conversations. And also, again, I think sustainability has come in more to the forefront in their businesses, apart from looking at construction and infrastructure. It has come into a business line conversation Mm -hmm. where sustainability has come into commercial tangible results. So uh, what they are uh, forecasting for the investors on their sustainability growth and their targets are having a commercial impact. So understanding those kind of levers and understanding how they manage expectations with their stakeholders uh, to the next end, of course, they will discuss everything, but that gives them an understanding how to manage our internal processes and procedures. Interesting. Uh, I mean, the investment side of the conversation, we can go into it, <laughs> but I don't think you're going to be able to talk too much about it. <laughs> right. um, that is a totally different um, a different subject, but I think ESG and everything are, are coming into forefront, uh, coming up with sustainability. Yeah. So I think these trends are going to uh, drive some of those initiatives. Uh, I think from the sustainability side, it's not uh, just making sure it's sustainable, it's a tracking of that sustainability yeah. and making sure you can have that consistency of replicating that sustainability of the projects that we are doing. Okay. Uh, well, and then another big topic around sustainability, it is regulations. Um, there, there's a, something that came in last year. There's a lot of things are going to be announced this year uh, and things are going to really come into full, full force next year. Um, and you guys, you operate in some of the most stringent markets in Europe, <laughs> not, not the easiest ones. <laughs> um, how how do you navigate all that? Like how, how do you cope with the regulations already in place? And how are you preparing for what's coming, uh, especially in 2024? We look at them, the regulations which are in place at the moment, they are guidelines and parameters for us to work in. And we do understand the new ones which are coming can be more stringent. Uh, They are in place to make sure uh, what we say we deliver (laughs) and what we do is sustainable. So keeping everybody in check and in line. Uh, Sometimes it can be stringent and tiring and a tedious process to go through that. However, for us, when we look at it, it is a guideline and I would say a pocket or a parameter for us to work in. And that gives us a good understanding of what we can do and what we can't do. Uh, And working according to those parameters uh, and making sure there's flexibility within that gives us the ability to design and build and implement uh, a, a solution to our customers according to their blueprint and with our expertise. Okay. So, and then talking about expansion now, what um, what new markets are you looking at? Into? <laughs> you know, the question always comes up, so. <laughs> I know, I know it was coming up. <laughs> Uh, uh, again, NDC Gaba, we are HQ in, uh, headquartered in uh, Germany. Uh, we operate in all of the European countries. Uh, so for us, there is no limit uh, apart from uh, not only being in Germany, we can go to any other country that we want to. Uh, and it's also driven by our end customers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't want to speculatively build. Uh, and again, that comes back into <laughs> sustainability. We just don't want to build something and make sure they come. We just want to make sure we build according to a blueprint that is sustainable. So for your question is, we operate in Europe, all of Europe. Uh, yeah, predominantly we, we do uh, uh, projects in uh, Germany, but we're looking at surrounding like uh, we see uh, Madrid coming up, uh, we see, uh, I, I would say, uh, Vienna coming up, Copenhagen coming up. Uh, these kind of areas that we are concentrating, Milan as well. Uh, mm. So we're looking uh, for sites, suitable sites, uh, and we are talking to our customers uh, in a regular basis. Very interesting. So, and then if um, if not the current customer, if new customers want to get in touch, if people want to get in touch, um, what, what's the best way to, to do so? The best way, like, you can go to NDC Gava, uh, our website, or like, you know, you can contact me on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, uh, you can see my profile, but I think the best where you'll get more understanding of our solutions and our 
uh, services within our website, and then you can contact us through that website. Okay. Well, Daniel, it's a it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Uh, I know it's short, and there's a lot more to talk about. But <laughs> today is a bit of back and forth. <laughs> yep. Thank you so much for your time. Yep. Um, Thank you so uh, much. And I'll be curious to see how NDC expands into those markets, especially Southern Europe. I think Southern Europe is quite exciting, uh, an exciting area within the continent right now. Uh, so thank you so much. And uh, as for you at home, thank you for tuning into JSA TV Live. Don't forget to check our social channels for more content. And until next time, happy networking.